The road stretched ahead of me, winding through the barren fields and the rocky hills, a, a thin line that seemed to melt into the horizon. I felt each step in my legs, a, a dull ache that had settled in hours ago, but no longer demanded my attention. Out here, there's nothing to listen to except the rhythm of my own feet, the crunch of gravel beneath my boots and the endless wind sighing over the open land. There's something about the rhythm that, that drives you deeper into yourself where, where there's no noise but your own thoughts stripped bare and unavoidable. When I first started walking, days like these unsettled me. I was used to rushing around, filling every spare second with tasks and noise. I didn't know how to handle this level of silence. The endless stretches of times alone by myself drove me crazy. And I realized just how much I'd hidden from myself, cocooned in the steady pulse of a corporate schedule, the tight grip of daily responsibilities constantly nagging at me. But out here, every step took me further from that life, and yet I could still feel it, clinging onto me like an invisible tether, the ghosts of the person that I had been back at the bank. I could still see myself in that suit, back in that fluorescent lit hall, always on my way to somewhere, meetings, emails, endless reviews. A man who believed that he was building something that every deadline brought me closer to a life that I could feel proud of. Back then, I thought that if I kept the plan, stayed the course, all that good stuff, life would eventually feel meaningful. I thought happiness was something that I could achieve if I pushed hard enough, if I sacrificed enough. They, the, the old me could have, could not have, I couldn't have fathomed abandoning that world. It seemed like the only way to exist. But each day, as I left my footprints on the winding pass, I, I felt that ghost drifting away from me, drifting out of my former life, no longer bound by its logic or its corporate demands. The first few weeks of this ship was the hardest. The novelty of my decision had wore off, leaving me alone with the reality of it. A reality that, that didn't come with a roadmap or a plan. Out here, there was no one telling me what to do, no schedules or expectations. Just me and my thoughts stretched thin over the miles of empty roadway. In the silence, things surfaced, old regrets, forgotten dreams, fears that I'd buried for so long I almost forgotten they even existed. I started to realize that I had spent years of my life avoiding this confrontation with myself. But out here, alone and on the road, there was nowhere for me to hide this stuff nowhere for me to hide from myself and some days i i feel a wave of panic a small sharp voice telling me that i was wasting my life because i wasn't following the american dream i think of the others that i'd left behind the people who had chosen to stay in the american dream inside the the walled offices and out on the golf course and doing the things that bankers and professionals do and they're now climbing the ladders that I had willingly stepped off of. I imagine their surprise if they could see me now a solitary figure on a lonely old road shoulders bowed beneath my pack and I'm moving through an endless silence. They'd probably call me crazy or maybe even selfish. They might even call me a coward for walking away from the corporate American dream. But every time that voice came up, every time I wondered if I'd made a mistake, I reminded myself of the deeper truth. I didn't leave because I was afraid. I left because I wanted to see the world without the filter of a career, a title, an identity, a paycheck. I wanted to know who I was when there was no one else around to define me. Eventually, the silence started to, to feel like a companion. The solitude became less of a burden and more of a teacher. 
one that showed me things that I, I never knew about myself. I'd walk for hours without seeing another soul. The sky stretching wide and open above me, its colors shifting with each passing hour. Sometimes I'd talk to it as if it were listening. And perhaps it was. What would you have done, I'd ask? Would you have stayed or would you have taken this road? One evening, I found myself on a ridge overlooking a valley, a place untouched by the rush of human progress, corporate greed, and special interest. The sun was dripping low, casting the rocks in a burnished gold. And there wasn't a sound, not even the chirp of a bird. It was so quiet that the thoughts I'd been avoiding seemed to rise up to meet me. I thought about my family, the ones who raised me to believe that stability was the ultimate goal, that security was the only way to live a good life. I remember my, my father's face when I told him I was leaving everything behind, his eyes shadowed with a mix of disbelief and being pissed off. And what will you find out there, he asked. More of an accusation than a question. I didn't know then, but in that silence, looking out over that valley, I finally felt like I was starting to understand. What I'd find out there, out here, was the purpose that I'd buried beneath years of doing what I was told in the corporate version of America. The version that was me that had been silenced by the noise of ambition and expectation to live the American dream. Out here, in these vast open spaces, I could let myself simply be, simply exist. There was no pressure to succeed or impress, just the task of existing in the present moment. As the weeks passed, I began to feel like I was reclaiming parts of myself I'd lost along the way, but not on this way. I remembered the kid that I had been, the one who used to spend hours wandering in the woods and the neighborhoods near my childhood home, the kid who dreamed of a life that was big and strange and beautiful before the world convinced me to shrink down those dreams to fit into the mold of success into the American and Western dream. Sometimes, I laughed at the irony. I would chased the comfort and security my whole life only to discover I felt most alive when I was completely untethered. I thought all of these things that I had accumulated in my former life, the expensive suits, the nice apartments and home, the titles and plaques that lined my office walls, the degrees, they'd all felt so important to me at one time, each one a marker of who I was supposed to be. But now, walking through the open land with nothing but the essentials on my back, somehow I feel richer than I ever had before. Out here, under the open skies, my wealth was measured in sunsets and the weight of my own thoughts, and the way the stars blinked to life at night, like a silent choir singing to no one but me. There was power in this solitude, a liberation in being stripped down to nothing but the core of who I was and who I am. I don't need titles, I didn't need possessions to feel worthy anymore when I was out here. I just needed the strength to keep moving, to keep exploring whatever was ahead of me. Each day brought me deeper into the life that I always wanted but had too been afraid to, to claim. There were still difficult moments, days when I felt small and uncertain, wondering if I'd ever be able to truly sever myself from the world that I left behind. Corporate America, that's like a shadow that clung to me, whispering that I was wasting my potential, that I was foolish to think this journey would lead me anywhere meaningful. But with every step, I learned to quiet that voice. I realized that I wasn't walking away from life, I was actually walking towards it. Out here, I was free to think beyond the limits of what I had been told was possible, free to question the beliefs that had once ruled me. 
All of a sudden, there was a clarity that came from being alone, from having nothing and no one to answer to but myself. And in that clarity, I saw the true waste that would have been me staying in that life, in that American dream, allowing myself to grow old and retire in a cubicle or an office, trading my time for something that never truly mattered. Now I walk each day with an open heart and an unclouded mind, carrying the understanding that life isn't about achievements or accolades. It's about the quiet courage that it takes to live truthfully to yourself and to your fellow man. My purpose isn't to conquer or acquire. It's to experience, to feel deeply, to listen to the silence and the wisdom out here. I have no freaking clue where this journey will take me, and I, I, I don't know. The road itself is enough. Each step is a testament to the fact that I broke free from a life that had caged me. I don't need any more validation than that. Out here, I've found the one thing that I've been searching for all along. The quiet joy of simply being, without need for explanation, without the weight of expectation. For the first time in my life, that feels like enough. That feels like enough. I'm journalist Matt Pierce. This has been a story. A story of life. A story of resilience. The story of finding ourselves. If you've liked what you've heard, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.